I will leave my adopted family overnight. All I leave them, there will be a letter. I get, I get oh, 18 was adopted by a family when I was five. Like, I don't know my biological parents. The, the, the family already had three children, three girls. Apparently, after the first girl, they tried for a boy, but it always ended up being a girl. So after three girls, they adopted me to finally have a son. In the first few years of my life, they treated us all well. My sisters, however, were never able to accept me. They saw me as an outsider who doesn't belong in the family. Actually, it was the oldest one called uh, Alicia who poisoned the other two called Mariah and Juliet against me by telling them that our parents would treat me better because I was a boy, which wasn't true. In fact, all three of them protested against me getting a room in the same floor as them. And my parents gave in. There was a spare room in the basement where I had to sleep now. This, however, just lead to them making fun of me, calling me names like Cellar Rat and many more things. I just shrugged it off, assuming that's how siblings treated each other. But I realized that having my sleeping room in the basement somehow also affected the way my parents treated me. Uh, sleeping down there felt like I was out of sight for them. They lost interest in me and I became less significant and important. While on the other hand, they started to focus more on my sisters. When I was 13, they completely lost interest in me. It was like I was a homeless person living in the basement. They missed all the appointments I had. They didn't care about my grades. They never even called me to eat. Sometimes I would come upstairs and see how they already took away the, the plates. If I was lucky, there were leftovers that I could eat. Do you think I got presents for my birthday? No. Because they didn't even know my birthday in the first place. And last Christmas, they said they forgot to buy presents for me saying they will go shopping with me the next few weeks to get me something which, as you might expect, never happened. I don't feel despised towards my sisters. I'm glad they have a home where they are cared for and that they can feel loved. I just don't understand why they would adopt me if they just throw me away like a piece of paper. I think they just wanted to have this feeling to have a son for some time, but then realized they could never love me like one of their own. And putting me into the basement was the last straw. That is when they completely banished me from their minds. And, and I just can't do this anymore. I decided to pack my things and leave. I will do it tonight. I stay at a friend's house for a while and try to look for a job that hopefully gets me enough money yeah. so that I can rent an apartment. And after that, I will never look back. I decided to leave a letter behind in my room. I would be surprised if they never even find it, let alone notice that I'm gone. You know, I'm, I, I use a throwaway for this, but I actually don't know why. I thought I don't want them to see this, but now that I think about it, I could send them this post. I don't know why I even wrote this in here in the first place. I feel so desperate. Maybe I want this because I hope that like someone is interested in me and my story. Update one. I didn't expect to give you an update so quickly, but in the brief time span between my, um, my post yesterday and this one right here, so many things happened that I have to update you right now. Let's start by what happened yesterday. First of all, I never expected my post to blow up like this. This is absolutely insane. I tried to read all of your comments and answer all direct messages, but it's just too many. So I'm sorry if I ignored you. Many of you had great advice, such as taking all my documents with me and go to the police, which I wanted to do today. Let's go through everything that happened chronologically. After reading through many comments, I decided to take my documents with me. So at the evening before my adoptive parents went to bed, I snuck into their bedroom and took all documents that I could find and waited for nightfall. I packed my things and left when all of them were asleep. Everything went as planned. I, I silently left the house and went to my best friend's home. He had a, an apartment in a neighbor city, so I had to walk for a while. I arrived at his apartment between 2 and 3 in May. He had a spare bedroom that he used for visitors who might want to stay for the night. We all agreed that I could live with him as long as I want. He only expected me to find a job quickly. And if I do that, he wants me to help him pay the rent for it. I was fine with that. I slept through the night and at the morning, I started looking for jobs immediately. But now a few hours, something more than interesting happened. While I was on his laptop, still looking through the online job advertisements and collecting them, the doorbell rang. He opened the door and I heard a familiar voice, but it wasn't one of my parents. It was one of my sisters. Mariah to be exact, the middle sister. I heard how she asked if I was here. He wanted to lie for me, but I decided to talk to her to find out what she wanted. So I appeared behind him and she went, thank God you're here and hugged me. I was completely overwhelmed and surprised and didn't know what to say. And then she told me how she found me. And this is where things get more interesting. She told me that this morning, a way too familiar sounding story appeared on her TikTok for you page. Apparently my story was shared by a TikTok account who actually had a quite big audience. 
and she became even more suspicious of the situation when her and the name of her sisters were also mentioned. To be sure about the situation, she went in the basement and into my room where she found the room mostly empty and of course my letter. I mentioned in the story that I would stay with a friend, so she went out looking for me, telling our parents she was about to visit a friend. She said she drove to two different houses before finding the correct address. Uh, she apparently visited two other friends of me before finding the correct apartment. Uh, apparently she also took the letter with her. She said she hasn't showed them the letter yet and wanted to talk to me first. No one besides her knew where I was or what I did. The last night she apologized to me and offered to talk with her on my side to our parents. Uh, she explained that the way I talked about her in the original post made her feel bad. She said she never hated me or anything. Uh, she admitted that she also protested against me having a room on their floor, but just because of Alicia's influence on her and because she believed her lies when she was younger. Now that I think about it, unlike Alicia and Juliet, she never called me bad names. He said that uh, Julia probably also is just insufferable because of how Alicia manipulated her. She said she never realized how bad I was treated. She never gave a second thought about me because uh, Alicia spread rumors that I was just very socially awkward and overall didn't like any of them and that I would just lock myself inside the basement like the worst introvert and all of that. And as a reason for her claim, she just reminded them that I was adopted and that is why I would try to make myself the outsider. I said to her that this might explain why she and Julia might have been like that to me, but not why my parents would have behaved that way. She replied that she also can just make claims here without any proof, but she thinks it's because even between them, Alicia is the golden child as the firstborn. Her and Juliet are only the failed attempts of them having a boy. And her being the golden child made it easier for her to manipulate both of them into believing the lies she told them. Then she said that she knows that mom and dad would be pretty easy to manipulate if you know how. And then she gave me four options. One, I could come with her right now and talk with her to my parents. Two, she would let me think about it and leave but not tell my parents. Three, I refused to go back with her entirely, but she would tell them about the letter without telling them where to find me. Four, I, I refused to go back with her entirely, but she would pretend to not know anything, but maybe stay in contact with me. I picked option two and she gave me her number. She said that if I decide to give him a chance, she would support me, but she would understand him if I refused to. And now we are here, I don't know what to do. I would live say I wasn't tempted to give them a chance, but on the other hand, if it's true, that Alicia is the one behind all of that. I don't know if I want to deal with her again. Update two. I want to keep you updated. So here I am again. Today I got a call from Alicia and apparently nothing is what it seems to be. I'm still trying to process this call. I've been in contact with Maria for a few days and I truly thought she was different, but she was just like the others. When I got the call today, it was an unknown number. I froze when I heard Alicia's voice. She screamed at me saying, who the hell do I think I am to talk about her like that? We had a little argument, but somehow managed to calm down. I thought about hanging up, but I wondered what she wanted from me. Yeah, she told me to grow up. I was never part of their family, according to her, and that I should have known it since the beginning and stopped crying about it now, and I could have done something about it the entire time. I admit I was angry, not very nice. I told her to go fuck herself and Maria's her. I was gonna get Maria out of there too, because both of us wouldn't deserve a life around someone like her. Then she said something I guess she shouldn't have said. She said that I was ridiculous because Mariah was a part of all of this theater and if I truly thought mom and dad cared about me, then she accused me of trying to ruin her family and told me what really happened after I left. They tried to save their face. Maria hasn't told me the full story. Apparently it's true that she was the one who found my story on TikTok by accident and she also found the letter first. In Maria's version of the story, she lied to mom and dad and told them she was about to visit her friend when she was looking for me and they didn't know about it. But Alicia said that Mariah told mom and dad immediately after finding my letter. This also answers the question of how Maria knew about my friend's address. I never told this to anyone except my adoptive mom. They thought that if they fooled me into thinking I had someone on my side, it would be easier for them to get to me because they assumed I probably wouldn't open the door for them. I couldn't believe it and asked, why I would believe someone like her? To which she replies, who do you think gave me your number? Then she demanded me to take down my posts and hung up. Honestly, I kind of believe her, but it also proves that they're all the same. They tried to manipulate me to get back with them to save their reputation. Many of you guys warned me about this, but even after everything that happened, I didn't want to believe someone could be this evil. But that's it, I, I will cut any contact with them. 
I am not taking my post down. Everyone deserves to know what these people are. I cannot believe I tried so desperately to see the good in them. Oh, some of you might want to know that I also apologize to my friend for offering a room that wasn't mine to begin with. I understand your critique about this, and you are right. I crossed the line there. Uh, with that being said, the chapter adoptive dickhead family is hopefully closed now. I try to focus on my life and maybe someday I will find someone who truly loves me. I might keep you updated if anything is going to happen, but think this could as well be the last post of this throwaway account. So wish me luck. So yeah. I'm divorcing my husband for suggesting an open marriage. Complicated feelings. I'm 29 female and my boyfriend is 28 male. My husband and I have been together for nine years married for seven. We got a not so classic shotgun wedding to give ourselves better chances of receiving custody of his half sister, 10 female. When their mom suddenly passed away, despite only being 20 and 21 years old, we did receive full legal custody over her absent father. This information isn't super relevant to the current situation, but it really sets the tone of our relationship with the sacrifices we made together and the things we each had to give up personally to raise this beautiful little girl. We don't have any children together, but his sister is now 17 and moved in with an older, more financially privileged aunt last year. Over the past year of this newfound alone time, I feel like we have flourished each personally and as a couple. We never fight arguments are rare, and we are pretty good at coming to understandings and apologizing when necessary. Basically, I feel we had a pretty healthy relationship. We each do little things for each other. I receive flowers no less than 10 times a year. We go on little vacations together and are generally really good. I guess a bit of the spark was sputtering out for a while, but I feel like that's normal for a relationship as long as ours. Fast forward to this past October. My husband seems like he has been depressed, which is normal for this time of year because of the timing of losing both his mom and dad in different years around the same time. The holidays are tough for him, so I get it and try to be there for him. He had previously planned a suicide attempt because of family issues before we met, so I take his mental health very seriously. He sits me down to have a serious conversation and starts it by saying he wants to open up our relationship. I felt my heart drop to my stomach, but stayed silent and let him talk. He doesn't go into why, just jumps right into rules and explains how he wants me to find someone first before he starts looking for someone himself. When I ask him why, he couldn't explain it and fumbled his words. I asked him if he already had someone in mind for himself, and of course he denies it. I couldn't help it. I definitely blew up. I was totally blindsided by this proposal. I slept on the couch after my outburst, and he didn't even try to come after me to explain anything which kind of made me feel worse. I had never felt so unwanted in my life than in that moment. I have never given the impression that I was the kind of girl to be open to that kind of relationship. I will never judge anyone for wanting to live that kind of life, but it's just not for me. He went to work the next day, but I had the day off and really thought about my situation. After crying for hours, I came to the realization that this was the end for our marriage. Even suggesting an open marriage was a deal breaker for me, I realized. While he was still at work, I moved all his stuff out of our bedroom into his sister's old room, technically a spare room now. He comes home from work, ready to talk it out. After talking through more of why he wants this, I've come to realize several things. He is way kinkier than he lets on. And disappointed with our bedroom life. He knows I'm not on the same level and doesn't want to push me past my boundaries to try things he knows I won't like. When I asked how he knows I won't like to try these new things, he explains they are an escalation of things he already knows I'm not down for, but won't go into specifics. He also is unhappy with how infrequently we have sex, but has never really put in the effort to change anything regarding it. Just complain over and over and expected me to just be ready to do the deed any minute of the day. He feels we have nothing in common now that his sister is gone. For context, he is more of the outdoorsy type, whereas I like to stay inside and read or play video games. I do venture out once in a while to do things he likes together and do genuinely enjoy them myself when I go like kayaking and skiing. I do understand that it isn't as often as he would like, though because we got married so young, there are a lot of things neither of us really got to experience or try, mostly sexually. He is mourning the loss of his young 20s and never getting to sleep around and explore his kinks. 
Part of the rules he explained was that we wouldn't technically be sleeping around with whoever we wanted. He called it an open marriage, but described it more as polyamory, where we would each have a boyfriend or girlfriend of our own that we went on dates and did things together. Someone we were each allowed to love and be with sexually. The emotional connection was pivotal for him, which broke my heart to pieces. During our talk, I told him I would never be able to look at him the same. I would never be enough for him and he was basically trying to get a pass for guilt-free cheating in my eyes. I told him it sounded like he wanted to be with someone else without ever leaving the comfort of his marriage. Knowing he could date around and not worrying if those relationships would fail. In case he could just come home to me. He tried denying these things saying he wanted to explore himself sexually but didn't want to lose me in the process. He tried getting me to agree to Matt Rage counselling to talk about the open marriage concept. I told him just proposing an open marriage was grounds for divorce for me, and I wasn't willing to go to a council for them to gang up on me to try to bully me into trying it. I know in reality that never would have happened, but emotions were high in the moment, because I told him I could never see him the same and how badly this crushed any self-confidence I may have had. He doubled down. He said if we go back into a relationship and pretend this never happened, then he would end up cheating on me. For him, it was open marriage or nothing. I chose nothing. Divorce papers were filed exactly one week later. He was very hurt and that I could jump right to divorce and kick him out of our bedroom so fast. But I refused to be a second choice or have to fight for his attention. I can't believe he's okay with the idea of another person being inside of me. He is willing to just give me up to explore his options. I can't believe I wasted so much of my time with him, helping him heal his family and raise his sister. I feel completely you advice did I overreact? Should I have waited longer before filing for divorce? Should I have just gone to marriage counselling or was my gut instinct correct about the marriage being over? I still love and care about him but my brain is screaming to be logical. We still live together while we are trying to figure out how to split everything. But now he is being super toxic and petty saying hurtful things and then begging for personal details about my life. I need to get out of this house. How do I cope with these complicated feelings? My husband blindsided me with wanting an open marriage. So I moved him to our spare bedroom while he wasn't home and filed for divorce a week later. Am I the asshole for telling mother-in-law she was dead to me after she showed up in labor and delivery without my mother? For the past three months, it's been a very well-known plan that when I 30 female. Went into labor, my husband was going to drive me to the hospital and my mother-in-law was going to pick up my mother, my kids and my grandmother all from one house. Both my mother-in-law and my mom were supposed to be in the delivery room. My gram was to watch my two kids in the waiting room. Everyone was in agreement with the plan. Now my husband and I have two sons already and for both births, my mother was present. Who helped me through so much of the mental anguish and panic. Especially after my last, who literally almost killed me. I was bleeding out on the table and my mom was the only one able to keep me calm. I needed her to be with me with this baby too, mentally. So we worked this plan out months in advance and everyone was on the same page. However, I go into labor. We make the phone calls to mother-in-law and my mom, telling my mom to be ready and my mother-in-law to go get my mother. An hour and 15 minutes later, mother-in-law shows up at the hospital without my mom, my kids or my grandmother. She said, well, it's late, so we need to just let everyone sleep. It was 9.30 p.m. And then sat her ass down on the chair in the delivery room and jumped on her phone. I told her in a pissed off tone to go get my mom. That was the plan. I needed my mom, etc. And she just wouldn't. At one point saying that she didn't feel up to driving that much my mom. I lived 20 minutes from her house, an hour away. So I told her to get the fuck out of the room and that she was dead to me. The amount of resentment and disgust that I felt toward her in this moment is honestly not something I feel I will overcome anytime soon. She was pissed saying that my mom got to experience two births already and how she didn't do anything wrong and she was just being respectful of people's sleep. And when she wasn't leaving, she was actually escorted out. Now my mom was able to make it to the hospital literally just as I was giving birth. My kids and my grandmother weren't able to make it, which bothers me a great deal. We promised our kids they would be the first to meet their sister outside of us and Grammy. I cannot forgive my mother-in-law for this at all. I honestly feel like I hate her with every fiber of my being, but I'm being told I'm taking this too far and that it wasn't that big of a deal. Am I the asshole? 
Am I the asshole for telling my husband I told you so over the paternity test? My 27 female have been married to my husband 28 male for two years and gave birth to our daughter five weeks ago. I'll try to keep this short so I don't waste your time with any irrelevant details. What happened was that our daughter came out with blonde hair and pale blue eyes, while my husband and I have brown hair and brown eyes. My husband freaked out at this and refused to listen to my explanation that sometimes babies are born with lighter hair and eyes that get darker over time. He demanded a paternity test and threatened to divorce me if I didn't comply. So I did. After my daughter and I got home from the hospital, my husband went to stay at his parents' house for the first three weeks to get some space from me while I recovered and he told them what was happening. My meal called and informed me that if the paternity test revealed that the child wasn't his, she would do anything within her power to make sure that I was taken to the cleaners during the divorce. I had my sister to lean on and help me take care of the baby during this. We got the results back yesterday and my husband came home to view them with me. I was on the couch in the living room, so he sat next to me and we started to read the results. They showed that he was the father, and my husband had this shocked, kind and mortified look on his face with his eyes wide as he stared at it. He couldn't help but say, I told you so, and started laughing at the way he looked. My husband snapped out of his shock and got mad at me for laughing at him. We argued for a bit, which was mainly him yelling at me before my sister came downstairs and my husband shut up. After that, my husband went back to his parents' house to clear his head and two, three hours later, my mother-in-law called to scold me for laughing in my husband's face because apparently it was kicking him while he was down. She's also left a couple of nasty texts, essentially saying the same this morning. I don't think I'm an A, but I'd like our outsider perspective on this. A2. Since someone asked in the comments, but I can't find it anymore, you have zero history of cheating. Here are some of the top comments on the Reddit post. So he was down by finding out that he was mistaken. And you didn't actually get pregnant with someone else's child. Tough luck, fella. He owes you a massive apology. Or three. Sorry about your husband and in-laws. This is insane. He abandoned you postpartum and forced you to take care of a newborn by yourself while healing. My husband and I also have a baby that looks nothing like either of us. She came out with strawberry blonde hair and blue eyes while we both have brown hair and brown eyes. We both just said, wow, genetics are crazy and moved on. I'm so sorry for what you're going through while being freshly postpartum with a newborn. Not the asshole. The fact he ran to mummy twice and allowed her to send you these texts is disgusting. This is meant to be the happiest moment of your life, bringing a child into the world and they're ruining it. You are taking him to the cleaners, yes. I don't mean this literally, merely copying mother-in-law's ridiculousness. I'd hope for OP to get a clean break and escape the toxicity of this family. You don't need this in your life. What are your thoughts on all this? I overheard my boyfriend say that he chose the wrong girl. I'm 25 female and my boyfriend is 27 male. For context, me and my boyfriend have been together for in total eight years. We met between mutual friends while I was still in school and he had just moved to my town to go to college. We were friends for two years before we started dating. The reason for this was because one, I was too scared to make a move and secondly, he was in love with one of our mutual friends. After she got a boyfriend, he moved on to liking me and we have been dating ever since. Last Saturday was his birthday. And he told me he has never been thrown a surprise birthday party and would like to experience one. I worked all week before Saturday, his birthday, planning and inviting people, getting reservations, buying a cake, etc. I asked his best friend to hang out with him for most of the day so that I could set up and get everyone to get here and hide for the surprise. The birthday party was a success and he was smiling the whole time. He had snuck off with his best friend somewhere and I wanted to find him so that we could sing happy birthday and cut the cake. As I was walking down the hallway, I heard him and his friend talking, so I kept walking towards their voices. I heard him tell his friend that he should have kept trying with our mutual friend. He told him that he should have been the man that was engaged to her and not her now fiance. He said that he hated waking up to me and that he wished that our mutual friend 
was the one that threw him his first surprise party. He said that he felt disgusted every time he had to kiss me or hold me because he knew that our mutual friend should be in his arms instead. He said that he felt like he was stuck in our relationship and that he would end up having to marry me. He said that our mutual friend was better than me in looks from head to toe. He said that she was the most gorgeous girl I've ever seen. I went back to the party and told everyone that I couldn't find him and that we would have to wait for him to come back. When he came back, he gave me a hug and a kiss on the head and told me he loved me. So I didn't want to ruin his party, so I went along with it. He doesn't know that I know. He doesn't honestly love me. I've just been going along with everything. I honestly don't want to break up with him. I just want to know how I can make him fall in love with me. I don't know what I did to make him feel so unhappy. So I would like to know how do I make my boyfriend fall in love with me? Or should I just give up on our relationship? He is the first boyfriend I've ever had and I'm scared to start dating again at my age. What should I do? My son will inherit everything. His affair baby will receive nothing. My name is Emily, 26 and I have a five-year-old son. My ex-husband, 29, cheated on me with his co-worker, Bethany, 28. I was two months pregnant with our second child when I found out. Bethany was going to have his child. It's a miscarried. My ex left the house to be with her. It's been two years since it was born. My mother-in-law has been supportive of me and has had nothing to do with my ex or his mistress and their child. Up until a few months ago, we adore my in-laws and we're extremely close. My mill and parents are the best of friends. She loves me and her grandson more than anything. This infuriates my ex-husband's affair partner. My in-laws cut contact with them straight away. Bethany was jealous that her child would never know the love of her grandparents. At least her son has a father. This brings us to the problem. Unfortunately, my meal has been very ill for a while and so she's updated her will. My ex-husband was an only child. So he would get everything, but now my son will inherit her house, villa and money. I will receive a large portion of her money and all of her belongings. Until my son turns 18, it will be in my trust. If passed before that, my parents will take care of it. They do not know this. The thing is, once they caught wind of her being ill, my ex-husband begged for forgiveness. Mistress started being nice towards her. She started fights and called her horrible names before and forced her to be around his baby. My mother-in-law is bedbound, but she says she wants to leave with a bang. So she'll endure this. I haven't encouraged her to do anything and this is her choice alone. They want her money and her son thinks he is still included in the will. He also thinks his child will now be acknowledged by his grandmother and will also receive money. Now my meal hasn't actually said she's forgiven them. She despises her son and his mistress for tearing apart our family. She wants to reward those who deserve it and get revenge in one go. The mistress keeps on hinting on how her child will grow up and attend a great college, etc. Money involved things whenever she's around my mile. Come actually. Mule's niece, my cousin by marriage, has overheard her on the phone discussing what wallpaper she wants in the dining room when she moves in and how my Mule has no taste whatsoever. She also mentioned how she'll finally be able to take down pictures of my son when my ex owns the house. Too bad for her, it will belong to my son. No changes will be made until my son becomes 818. It's his grandmother's home and he should be allowed to cherish it in the way she's decorated it. So I'm not really allowed to tell anyone. And though this revenge will be satisfying, I'll have to lose my mother-in-law. It's kind of a win-lose situation and I dread the day when she'll take her last breath. She means a lot to me, I love her. She wants this for her grandson and has said that she cannot rest until she knows her son and his mistress have been punished. She wants this because her childhood was also ruined because of her father and his affair partner. She wants my son to know he was loved and will always be loved. I hope my son will always value the great women in his life. I wish he had more time with his grandmother. I might make an update if anyone wants it, though I pray to God it's a long time before that. Eddie, I thought this post would attract just a handful of people. But wow, thank you all for listening to me and giving me advice. As for those who are angry at me for not asking my mile to include my ex's new child, I can't do anything about that. Yes, I'm happy. Matt's selfish, but I'm gonna put myself and my son first. That child contributed to my miscarriage and is one of the reasons why my son has not had a father for over two years. I can't change my mile's mind about him. I do pity the baby, but it's not up to me to fend for it. It's not my responsibility. 
I've tried talking to my mill, but she's had her whole childhood ruined because her father made his affair children his top priority. This is why she wants nothing to do with it or her son. He knows that she went through so much because of cheaters, yet he decided to do the same to her. He has seen his grandfather favour his aunt and uncle over his mother. If this happened to you, you wouldn't be so happy about sharing yet another thing with the baby. But thank you again to those who have listened to me. And I've read out the nice comments to my meal. We've had a great laugh together. Edit two. The mistress would send me photos of her ultrasounds after I miscarried, either to me or to my family. In the first envelope, she sent a letter full of the nastiest things about me, my son and my miscarried baby. She'd even tagged me on social media on an account I didn't know about. It was an invitation to her baby shower. She has done plenty of disgusting and hurtful things to me regarding my miscarried baby. The people who are coming at me in the comments would not be as civil as me if anything like that happened to them. Ignoring her child is honestly the best option. I do not want my son to grow up with her son. But to those who are insulting and saying rude things about my dying mother-in-law, you are truly disgusting.